Howdy developers. Some of you are probably wondering why I'm wearing a mask that looks like a grassy field. Well, that's the subject of today's video, field masks. Love the mask, but it makes it hard for me to talk to you. Hi, I'm your host, Wesley Chun, and welcome to another episode of the G Suite Dev Show. While we do look at several G Suite APIs in this video, field masks are general and apply across Google APIs, from YouTube to the Google Cloud platform. So what are field masks? Well, they're not masks that you wear. The best way to think of them is as a filter. While they work differently when reading data from versus writing data to an API, the filter analogy is still the most appropriate. So why discuss field masks? Well, they're not the most straightforward feature and can be confusing for some. Because the docs are often terse, it may not be clear as to what they do or how to use them. So we're going to clear the air so you can hit the ground running. Let's start with read. When making an API call to get information, response sizes vary between APIs. Some return just a trickle of data, while others give you an ocean. If you're using a particularly verbose API, this can add up. Field masks can help control the amount of data that comes back. This is commonly referred to as partial response in the documentation. Let's look at a few examples from various Google APIs, starting with Gmail. In another video, I show users how to use the Gmail API to update email signatures. To change a user signature, you need to loop through all email addresses to find the ones you want to change. If you're changing just the primary signature, you need the isPrimary flag too. Both are part of the send as array return in the API response you see here, along with plenty of other fields we don't need. To tell the API that those are the only fields we want, specify them as comma-separated parent slash child fields. An alternative shortcut is to group the children with parentheses, making it a bit easier to read. Either way, this instructs the API to drop all other fields. Well, to see what it looks like in real life, here's some pseudocode. Well, OK, it's actual Python. The snippet displays all of your email addresses and flags your primary address with a P. We drop in the fields parameter just like how we drew it up on the previous slide. Also see the Gmail API docs page on partial response. Moving on, in another video, we showed you how to display the first 100 files and folders in your Google Drive, but didn't filter the response. In a bit, we'll see how this impacts performance in terms of both space and time. For now, we can use these field mask values so only the IDs, file names, and MIME types come back in the response. As before, we can also group with parentheses. Here's a Python code that uses field masks to get and display these three fields for each of the 100 files. The Drive API docs also has a page on partial response and other good performance practices. Before leaving this example, I want to share the results of a little test I ran with the Drive version 2 API without fields like the call you see here, and then run it again but with fields. Guess what? The payload for the data for all 100 files comes in at 242k, almost 16 times the 15k used when getting just the IDs, file names, and MIME types, saving about 94% in memory cost. Similarly, executing the API call with fields took just 144 milliseconds, almost three times faster than the 554 needed for all of the data. It wasn't a rigorous study, but gives you a rough idea as to what field masks can do. If the API payload is small, the server doesn't have much work to do to throw those responses together. But on the other hand, if it has to assemble a car, you've got some extra overhead. Why should you incur additional network costs and negatively impact latency for data you don't need? Making some sense now? For the last demo, we'll fetch a spreadsheet's name plus the names and IDs of each of the individual sheets. This example is a bit more complex than the first pair, as the values are in different fields, as you can see from the get response. This time, the full paths down to each field are too long. We can do some parenthetical grouping, but in the end, you're going to have a mix and can't really get it shorter than this. Here's the corresponding Python snippet that does what we want with the help of field masks. There's also a partial response page in the Sheets API docs. You got the hang of it now? Well, that was reading from an API. In part two, we'll look at writing data with field masks, as well as share some best practices for both read and write. Find out more about partial response from this page in the client library docs. The field mask guides in the Slides API docs is the most comprehensive, covering read and write. So check it out to get a preview before the next video. And the last link takes you to more episodes of the G Suite Dev Show. Well, that's it for today. Now that we took the mystery out of using them for read API calls, it's time for you 
to put on your field mask and cut down on your API response payloads. Be sure to tune into part two of our two-part series to learn more about using field masks with right API calls and subscribe to our channel. This is Wesley Chan, and we'll see you the next time on the G Suite Dev Show.